Parents of children at a Catholic school are calling for a change in the rules to keep a popular teacher in his post. Lyndon Strong has been acting head at St Mary's in Gosport, Hampshire, since last September. But he's been told he will have to leave at the end of the term and can't apply for the permanent position because he is remarried. Well, the Catholic Diocese says it's national policy within the church that an applicant must be a practising Catholic of good standing. But is being divorced and remarried really a sign of disrespect to Catholic values? With me now to discuss this is Sean Griffiths, the education editor at the Sunday Times, and Marie Fahey from Catholic Voices. Um, if I turn to you first, uh, Marie, is this really standard practice across all Catholic schools? Yes, and he probably would have known that before it actually happened. It's about integrity, really. A Catholic school has to keep its values and they have to consistently apply them. Um, so if you look at any organisation, for example, if you had a vegetarian organisation, and they had somebody who was their main leader or spokesperson going for a McDonald's Big Mac on a Friday night, no one would raise an eyebrow. So with a Catholic school, it has a very distinctive ethos, which is one of the things I think why people like to send their children there. The head teacher is somebody who represents the school, who's somebody who is that figurehead. So that person has to be seen to be living along with the Catholic ethos that he represents. Um, and the other thing I'd say is, having worked in schools all my life, um, you know, pupils, they can sniff out if you're not quite real, not quite living up to what you say you do. And now we all, none of us do it perfectly, obviously, but I think being a head teacher, there is, there is an argument there to say that actually that is part of the, in the Catholic education services, service, the governor's report, everything that they go for, it's all, it's all embodied that you have to be living up to the Catholic doctrine. Sean Griffiths, do you agree that, that he would have known what he'd signed up for and therefore we, we shouldn't be surprised? Well, I don't know whether he knew or not, but I do think that this is just ridiculous in the 21st century. Um, you know, Michael Wilshaw, the Chief Inspector of Schools, issued his uh, annual report yesterday uh, looking at education in England. And one of the things he said was that we don't have enough good head teachers and we don't have enough good teachers. And this is a good head teacher who is being prevented from doing his job and continuing to doing, doing his job simply because he's remarried. I mean, it's absurd. What do you say to that? Absurd. I mean, this is a teacher that 375 parents have signed a, a petition saying he is exactly that, a brilliant teacher, uh, and they want to keep him. Presumably they're Catholics, uh, and they would like him to teach their children. Yeah, and it, I've, from what I've read, he is an amazing teacher. But the fact remains that the church, if you look at the church, the premises, the church schools work for the common good. They do so much good in the communities, but they are distinctive. When Ofsted inspectors come in, and I've, I've witnessed this myself, they say there's something different about these schools. Now, if we take away what makes them distinctive, it seems, it may seem to the outsider that actually this is just some rule that we're just sticking to and we're not seeing the bigger picture. But the whole point of having a Catholic school is that we believe in Catholic values or otherwise we wouldn't have any Catholic schools. So if we want to have Catholic schools the way they are now, then we have to respect the values that the Catholic Church upholds. Sean, Sean would you say that, that uh, religious schools, schools of faith, operate um, outside the, the parameter of other state schools or, or do you think they should all be judged in the same exactly the same way regardless of whether they're faith schools or not well i think what we have to remember is that catholic schools are state schools they get taxpayers money and at the moment they're supposed to take 50 percent of their pupils from faiths or from no faiths that are not catholic um, so what kind of message is it sending to the kids in that school if you say to them the only person who can be a head teacher of your school is somebody who is married if they're gay if they've remarried if they're divorced they can't be a head I mean these are not the values of 21st century Britain Marie Forrey that's a point that, that that has to be made I mean this is discriminating against someone isn't it the point raised there by, by Sean what if the the acting head were, were gay it's not discrimination. I think there's a mixture. I think people get mixed up about discrimination. It, it can't be discrimination because what we're saying is, you know, obviously there is taxpayer money going into the schools. But again, but, but if, a, if an acting head 
were found to be gay or, or decided that they came out about being gay and they then lost that job, that would be discriminating against that person, wouldn't it? Well, you could argue that it would be discriminating against Catholics not to let them hold their views on marriage. And that's what I, the other thing I'd like to say about this is that us Catholics, we have very strong distinctive views about marriage and the beauty of marriage and the fact it's a sacrament. Now, this whole issue is about divorce, and divorce, obviously, is a legal thing. It's, it's nothing to do with the vows that a person made on their wedding day in terms of the sacramental side of it. Now, in terms of discrimination, um, as I say, every other organisation that you look at expects its figureheads to embody the values they proclaim, and the church can't be any different. That, that head cannot stand up and talk about poverty and talk about refugees and talk about equality and talk about all the other values that the Catholic Church is so good at promoting. But why not? But he can't if he's, as a Catholic, if he, if, I'm not talking about the individual man, I don't know yes, the man, of course. but as a, a Catholic in general, as a leader of the church, of the school, which you actually are um, part of the teaching office of the church, you can't then go on saying about other issues if there's a fundamental teaching of the Catholic Church that you're publicly not adhering to. Now, that's not saying that everybody in schools are perfect. As I say, we've all wor I've worked in schools and lots of teachers are remarried. In my parish, there's lots of people, it's not discriminatory, who are divorced and remarried. And those the teachers are still allowed The teachers teach? are allowed, yes. It's about the um, head of RE and it's about the head teacher. It's about maintaining... A, a difference. It's about maintaining an ethos, which is a valuable ethos that has to be maintained in the world today. I would disagree and say that actually we don't have to move with what the 21st century values. We have to keep to what, what the church believes is right and stand up for traditional marriage and stand up for traditional values. Sean, the, the Catholic Church wants to abide by their teachings and if you have a figurehead, a headmaster of a Catholic school, he should be seen to abide by Catholic teaching. Is that not fair? Well, then I would say the Catholic Church should pay for its own schools and should only admit Catholic children. At the moment, these are state schools and they take children from a wide variety of faiths and backgrounds. And I just think it's, it's an impossible position uh, to say that the head teacher has to be someone who's married, can't be gay, can't have divorced and remarried. It's just ridiculous, really. Would you go as far as to accuse them of uh, d discrimination as, as we, we look at our, our laws? Would this come under that sort of remit? I'm not an employment lawyer, um, so I don't know. I would have thought there would be questions to be raised about this. Certainly in terms of European law, I would have thought it, it's not uh, complying with European law, but I'm not an expert. Marie Fahey, if, if uh, the, this debate uh, goes on, as it, it probably will do, yeah. um, and it is found, perhaps, that this veers into legality and this not being legal to not have a headmaster if they're gay or if they're remarried, might the church have to rethink its stance? I, I don't know. I mean, the, the Catholic Education Service would have to speak on that. Um, the, the bishops would have to speak. I don't, I have, you know, I couldn't really comment on that. I, I assume they'd look into all the eventualities. But I think when him being an acting head, as he was, he would know um, what the governor's stipulations are. Obviously, he's employed by the governors. And in the governor's it, rules, it clearly states that you have to be a practicing Catholic. Um, so I don't know how that would work, for, you know, compared with the law myself. Is it something as an individual that, that you would like to see addressed, uh, and perhaps as, as uh, Sean is saying, brought into the 21st century, or are you happy with the, the status quo at the moment? I'm happy with the status quo. I don't, obviously, seeing a really good teacher not being able to teach. Of course, in every individual case, there's always casualties. I do respect, obviously, the Catholic Church. I think that we stand up for what we believe to be the teaching of Jesus. And if we believe that, then we have to stand up to it, despite what century we're living in. And if other people, you know, if the mood of the current time is different to that, then, you know, there are a few issues, I think, that you know, that 
maybe the mood of the current time does disagree with. However, that fails to look at all the good the Catholic Church does, you know, the biggest provider of healthcare in the world. The Catholic Church as a whole does so much good and the schools do so much good in terms of immigration, community cohesion, you know, charity work, what we do in terms of giving to other people. That wouldn't exist without the fact that they're Catholic. So it's like wanting to have your cake and eat it, to use the phrase, you know, but it, it's about, we can't abolish that and still expect the schools to do what they do and the church as a whole. So I agree that we should, I'm not saying it's easy and, and we're a church full of sinners and we're all on a journey and the individual cases, of course, and I don't know, as I say, I don't know the man, but we have to keep to the, and what Pope Francis said. Interesting there you say that, you, you know, you're a church full of sinners. Um, Sean Griffiths, I suppose to, to those outside, it, it seems like sinners need not apply um, uh, and we're looking for people that are, are completely perfect. Well, perfect within the, the, you know, the rules set down by the Catholic Church. I mean, I personally don't think that if you've remarried, you're, you're not perfect. But um, I think the casualties here are really the children who are at risk of losing a very good head teacher for no particularly good reason. And I think that's such a shame. Yeah. Sean Griffiths and Marie Fahey, thank you both for speaking to us. Well, certainly those parents, those 375 that have signed that petition, will be calling for uh, him to be appointed. So we shall follow this story, Kinney. Thank you both for hearing.